Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I got a highly requested topic, at least every stream I do gets asked at least 10 times, which client side mods do I use? So today I wanna show all the features I'm using of Master's client side mods. So let's start with a list of the mods that I'm using. Tweakaroo, Lightmatica, Minihut, and Item Scroller. All of those mods were developed by our server member Master, and in the video description, you can find links where you can download those mods. This video is also not a tutorial video or a full showcase of the mods, and just showing the features I'm mostly using. Let's start with Lightmatica, the blueprint mod. We mostly use this to build large scale projects with multiple people at the same time. So it enables you to show um, a structure that you want to build and just follow the blueprint. You can also use Lightmatica to make a blueprint. So let's show this real quick. You need to go to the area selection browser, make a new selection. In this case, I'm gonna select a tree here. Then using your Lightmatica tool, um, which is just a normal Minecraft item, it's also adjustable. For me, it's a stick. You select the area that you wanna make a blueprint of. Okay, so we wanna get this tree approximately. Yeah, seems about right. And then you could also save this uh, to your Lightmatics folder. All right. From your Lightmatics folder, you can also yeah, load different structures. So here we have a basalt form, and then it shows you um, yeah, the blocks you need to place. You can also adjust a lot of render options. What I mostly use is the layer below mode. So I can really build it layer by layer. So usually in a survival world, we would always start with the lowest layer, fill in the blocks. And yeah, once we get the first layer, we would Render the next one and build it layer by layer until the whole farm is built up. Another feature that I use a lot of Lightmatica is the pick block option for the blueprint blocks. So the blocks here, not really in the world, they're just rendered for the client, but I can still pick block them. So like in normal vanilla, we can pick block by middle mouse clicking. You can also do that with the blueprint blocks. It's really helpful when building. There are also a lot of options, so you can adjust the visuals, hotkeys, and general settings of Lightmatica here. But yeah, I want to keep this video brief and don't explain it all. So let's move on to the next mod that I'm frequently using, which is Tweakaroo. By now, Tweakaroo has over 100 features, but I just want to showcase the ones that I actually frequently use. It has some very nice building options. If you build a lot of projects with observers and pistons, sometimes you will struggle to get the placement right. So let's say I need to place a downwards facing piston here. So yeah, there's not much I can do. I can only place an upwards facing one by jumping up. If I need to place a downwards facing one, only option is really to yeah, place a auxiliary block here, go down a little bit, and then I can place a downwards facing piston. But with Tweakaroo, I can also adjust the rotation of the block without adjusting the position of the player. So normally if you yeah, try to place down a block, always faces the same way. Only way to influence is to rotate the player. Tweakaroo, I can also change the direction in which the block is facing. Um, I yeah, set it to left alt. It will just yeah, face the other way if I try to place it down. If I hold down left control by placing the block, then the piston would face into the selected block. So like that. You can also combine the two and have a piston face away from the block. Another nice option is the offset placement. So sometimes you have to place a floating block. I set the offset placement to G. So if I hold this down and select one of the areas here, it yeah, would place the block with an offset of one. It would also work diagonally. So I can place the blocks like this. So for example, really helpful if you have to go down so usually you can't really place a block lower. One way to do it in vanilla is placing a water bucket, glide down, and then uh, keep placing blocks on the underside. But you can also use the offset placement and make a downwards staircase. What I also often use is the fast block placement. So this is basically like a clicking script, allows you to place multiple blocks really quickly. And also doesn't make a mistake. It's not like a, just a fast right clicker, which we also have an option in Tweakaroo, something like that. 
Um, it's a bit smarter. It doesn't yeah, misplace blocks. So it will only be able to um, place blocks depending on a setting. So at the moment I have it on the facing setting, it could only place blocks that face into the initial block. There's also yeah, other options, for example, layer mode, then you could only place blocks in one layer. It's quite helpful. Um, yeah. Diagonal, line, column, facing, and plane. What I rarely use is the grid placement option. So I can enable here with the tweak toggles. There's also a search bar. Tweak placement grid is true. Also requires the fast block placement to be turned on. So this allows me to only place a block in a certain grid. So I'm holding down right mouse button, but it will only place a concrete block every second block. It is also adjustable. We go to generic, we can adjust the placement grid size. So maybe go for five. So I can only place every fifth block now. But I don't use that very often really. What I also occasionally use is the hotbar slot cycle option and the hotbar slot randomizer. So the hotbar slot cycle is useful in case you need to build something with a certain pattern. Also needs to adjust it in generic. So we have a slot cycle of three. So the first three blocks of my hotbar will be cycled every time I place a block. Like that, every time I place, it swaps to the next hotbar cycle. And then we also have the randomizer that just randomizes between all of them. I think this also needs to be adjusted. So we got five here, let's yeah, set it to four. That includes the pistons now. Now it will just randomize to which blocks it swaps. And it's great for building something randomized. What I also always use is the gamma override, which sets the gamma just a lot higher. So when I started making videos on YouTube and streaming, always a lot of com people complaining that it's too dark. And yeah, those complaints are quite annoying. So the only reason why I'm using this is people don't complain about caves being too dark, etc. What's also really helpful when building is the automatic restock. So in survival, you often run out of items at a certain threshold. In case you still have items left in the inventory, but automatically select those and fill it up to half a stack again. Super useful when building. What's also really helpful in survival is automatic tool swapping. So if your tool is at a really low durability, it would automatically swap it out at a certain durability level, which also is adjustable. So this way, there's almost no chance that you accidentally break a tool because it automatically swaps it out until there's none left. Tweakru also has an option to reduce the explosion particles, which helps reducing client side lag. Instead of getting all of those particles, you only get a minimum of it. You still get some, but not nearly as much. So this helps, especially when you run, for example, a world eater, where a lot of explosions are happening all the time. This is definitely a nice Tweakeru feature. Tweakeru also has a Schalke box display feature. So by default, you only get this list of five items you have in a Schalke box. And it says how many stacks more are in there. But if you hold down, in my case, left shift, then it actually shows you exactly what's in there instead of just having this list. It's really helpful in case you have, a, you have storage and you want to know exactly what's in the Schalke box. There's also a list of the things you can disable using Tweakeru, but I always have to turn on is you know, disabling block breaking particles. It just looks a lot cleaner and actually helps a little bit with the digging, I feel like. Uh, enable the block breaking particles again, this just by now feels actually odd to me. What I also have disabled is the nether fog. You can see the difference. I think it's just a lot nicer to see the nether clearly. I think there's also an option in Optifine, which by the way I'm usually not using. And there's also an option here for the render distance, so the chunks that are furthest away. It's usually also a bit of fog. But I also disabled that just to yeah, see clearly. So those are pretty much the Tweakeru options that I mostly use, but there's a lot of more useful stuff. For example, disable boss fog in case you're fighting an ender dragon. It's kind of nice. Um, 
can disable falling block entity rendering, disable particles in general, disable rain effects. There's so much stuff also here with the toggles. There's such a huge list of features. I might need to make a separate video, maybe try and explain most of them. Next, let's take a look at Mini Hut. So this is basically an adjustable F3 menu. Well, the F3 menu gives you a lot of information, but a lot of it is also not really relevant at all time. So that's why we could also use the Mini Hut mod that has everything pretty much the F3 menu has, adjustable and some more. So if you look at it top left, I think I can also adjust the size of it. So maybe it's a bit easier to see in generic. I can adjust the size. Yep, here it is. Set it to really large. So here's some of the options. We could display the, the real time, then the world time, including the ticks. What I have here is also the position in the world, which is quite helpful. The next one is also really interesting, custom feature block breaking speed. So this shows you how many blocks you break per second. And 20 is the max, so you can see how efficiently you're digging. Next also good information, server TPS and MSPT. Then I yeah, got light here, this is just an F3 option. Speed is also really good, shows exactly how fast the player is moving. So if I just run, for example, straight forward, reach 5.612 meters per second. But yeah, in case I run diagonally, you can actually reach higher speeds. Then yeah, here's an option, show if it's a slime chunk or not. The region file name. There's also a distance option. But it's also really cool, I'm just missing in vanilla. It's this here. Display how many bees are inside of a hive. Here we got two inside. This would also work in the menu if you enable it. Um, let's quickly do that. I think it's in generic bee tooltips. But I think this only works in single player, actually. Um, and then it can also, if I, yeah. But over the beehive, it shows me that two bees are inside. This is really helpful uh, in case you're building a honey farm or something similar, just to have an overview of how many bees are inside of your beehive. The other part of Mini Hut are all the rendering options. So we could, for example, outline the bounding box of a swamp hut, which is important in case you're building a witch farm. So there's yeah, all kinds of options. Which structures you want to render, you can... Yeah, select pretty much everything and get the exact bounding box. Maybe let's actually try to find a desert perimeter and show that as well. So now we can see the exact bounding box of the, the desert temple. It was buried in sand here. It's quite interesting. Obviously at the moment it's not really important for gameplay because there's no specific mob that spawns in the bounding box of a desert. But it's still yeah, quite interesting to see. You can also see the bounding box of the village. In case you're playing single player or you have access to the seed of the world, you can also display slime chunks. Another really helpful feature is the option to add custom shapes, like for example a despawn sphere. This will show you in which area mobs would be able to spawn. Everything outside of this sphere around the player would despawn immediately. For example, if you're planning to make a witch farm, um, you could visualize where the best spot or the best AFK spot is. This would be above the farm. Then just need to have your yeah, entire witch farm, including uh, where I kill the witches inside of this despawn sphere. Um, and then just need to make sure that everything else that is outside of the farm, but still inside of the sphere is spawn proof and can safely ignore the rest. So it's really helpful to visualize things like that. Like with the previous mods, Mini Hut has a lot more options than I've shown. I'm really focused on the ones I frequently use. All right, let's move on to the last mod, the item scroller mod. It's probably the one that I use the least features of. So what I always use is um, the ability to quickly drag items into a chest and out of it. This is not vanilla, this is part of item scroller. And I also use the crafting feature sometimes. So in particular, I'm using the fast craft option. So usually you go to a crafting table and then I press A to open the menu and select a recipe. In this case, I want to add the gold ingot recipe to the menu. Then I just press middle mouse button on the gold ingot and then here you can select the recipes. And then there's an option 
If I press left control, left alt and C, it would immediately craft all of my items in the inventory in the selected recipe and throws it on the ground. So it's super helpful when mass crafting stuff. Um, in Peaceful recently we used this to craft all the honey bottles into blocks. So if we go to the menu again, now I can select the other recipe and then immediately craft the honey blocks. Just got a little bottle explosion there. There are also a lot of other options to item scroller, but it's definitely the mod that I'm the least knowledgeable about. So previously only had it in my mod folder to use the item dragging. And I just recently learned about how to craft items with item scroller. So this is the list of mods that I'm frequently using. I'm definitely considering for quite a while now to make a more detailed video, maybe even a tutorial video on some of those mods. But mods are still adding features to the mods all the time. So the video would be outdated rather quickly. Definitely a huge thanks to Master for putting all the work on making those mods for the community. Really appreciate it. That's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.